First lay out some butcher paper and weigh it down with some heavy objects, but if you're using a candle, don't light it. I mean, unless your house is as odorous as mine is. But it probably isn't. I mean, unless you also have a smelly wounded duck in your foyer. Anyway. Then I sketched these miscellaneous shapes onto the paper, cut them out, tried them on, made some adjustments, taped them together, and ended up with this. Now, red, gold, or blue vinyl will be a rare and expensive find, so I used some plain black home decor vinyl and painted it with some various fabric paints from Hobby Lobby. Ignore this E6000 glue, I don't even know why it's in the shop. I also used some stretch vinyl. If you're not a professional fabric shopper and you're not sure how to figure out if something is vinyl, basically a good rule to follow to find out if it's the right type of fabric. If you do this with any other regular fabric, <laughs> absolutely nothing happens. You'll know it's stretch pleather because it will make this sound. <laughs> If it's a home decor vinyl, it should sound like... With that in mind, trace your shapes onto the home decor vinyl, which should be sort of heavy and thick. Remember, even though the suit won't be bulletproof, you want it to look bulletproof, so that... Uh, so maybe maybe so that, so that no one will even try to shoot you. After cutting out the breastplate pieces, pieces, place them right sides together. Then sew along both those lines. Next, you must make shoulder pads as, I don't know, a precaution against an alien cat scratching your shoulder or something. To accomplish this, I cut out four pieces, roughly the size of a guinea pig, and then sewed them together two by two along the top, or what would be the guinea pig's spine. Now flip the pieces right side out, and if like mine they look a little rough, flip them back inside out. And where you would normally iron down the seam allowance, you are simply going to hot glue it down so that you don't have to walk all the way to the other room where the iron is. I repeated this step on my breastplate and I think it's evident how satisfactory the results were. Look at the glued side versus the non-glued side. Next, I hemmed the edges of my shoulder pads down with hot glue. Okay, I feel weird calling them shoulder pads because they're really not, they're more like shoulder hats, really? Anyway, helpful tip when dealing with hot glue is to use your teeth because fun fact, teeth actually can't get burned. So sorry for the lack of instruction on the color pieces. I lost some footage, probably because of a hacker or I just forgot to press record. Then I painted it all. <laughs> These cans of fabric spray paint were $5.99 each at Hobby Lobby, but they were on sale for 40% off. So for that price, I highly recommend. I also highly recommend this paint if you wanna paint your own skin permanently because it doesn't come off. Before painting the back of my pants, I experimented with some tape to try to create some alien-esque shapes, then stuffed the pants with various cloths and bags in an effort to make it easier to paint. <sighs> I really like the weight of this thing. I feel like it's something like what a firefighter would use to train with. Okay. Sorry if this tutorial is getting too, uh, heated. Project is barely started and we are already out of blue. These things don't go very far. At that point in time, I got curious and wanted to see what regular spray paint would do to this fabric, so it was time for a Walmart trip. But alas, I detest going to Walmart by myself. For whatever reason, I'll go to the movie theater by myself, I'll go to restaurants by myself, but not Walmart. So, I had to retrieve my friend Courtney and bring her with me. Get in, loser, we're going shopping. I was actually looking for Courtney. Where is she? Get in, loser. We're going shopping. Okay. Quick message to the older generation in the audience. I do not, in fact, think that my friend is a loser. That phrase was simply a pop culture reference to an early 2000s film. Anyway, then my winner of a friend and I went spray paint shopping. Someday in the future, when all spray paints are locked behind bars at every store, we'll look at this video and think, ah, oh, the good old days. I'm gonna roll the dice here. Whatever picture ends up being on this poster, no idea what it is. That's what I'm gonna make. <laughs> C.M. Wait a second. C.M. Courtney Markley. I've never seen you and Captain Marvel in the same place before. Why are you walking away? Yeah, I drove you here. Where do you think you're gonna go? I hope you're all fluent in sarcasm so that you can fully understand what I mean when I say something fantastic happened. The pants that I was painting, I left them outside to dry. Does this look like weather that anything would dry in? We found this red belt at Salvation Army. The only problem is it has a silver buckle, so we are going to spray paint it gold. To make the boot covers, I used one sheet of crap foam, craft foam per leg. <laughs> I don't even want to know what crap foam would be like. Anyway, then I just traced my foreleg with it. You know, like the forearm, but for your leg. I feel like there's a word for that. Shin. Yes, voiceover game not strong today. For that tricky star on her chest, I found something at Hobby Lobby that was the perfect shape, but was just a hair too big. So I used my big manly hands and 60 years of artistic experience to carve the star out of oven baked clay. Just kidding. I I initially carved a star and it wasn't very good so I had my dad clean it up. And I placed this blonde hair on his head in an attempt to deceive you all. Before baking the star, he put a little metal loop in the back so that I would have something to sew through. Next I used my stretch pleather and remember that sounds like <coughs> Then I drew out the shape for a simple t-shirt, but for some reason didn't cut along where I drew, I cut it out upside down. I don't ask me why. Honestly, it'd probably be easier just to go to the store and buy a long sleeve navy shirt, but when you live in Ohio in the winter like I do, sometimes you look for any excuse not to leave the house to go to the store, even if that means making and painting a shirt. The cookie's ready. Oh, I don't have oven mitts on. I see Captain Marvel tomorrow right after I get off of work, so I have to get this costume done today. That is my number one priority after putting a blackhead strip on my nose because that's getting really bad. Now that that's done, I guess it's time to work on the- Oh, but wait, I'm dog sitting again and dogs have to go on jogs often. Come on, Vera, let's go on a jog. Come on. 
What a run. First off, forgot that dogs poop sometimes. Occasionally they do it on other people's property. And I don't have any little bags with me, so I'm using a leaf to carry this home. Okay, also I noticed I was getting stared at a little more than when I'm usually on a run, and I was like, is it weird to run with a dog? Did I just look better than usual? Legitimately 1000% forgot I had this nose strip on. I think sweating caused it to just leave black adhesive residue all over my nose, so glad I did that. When using tape to make designs on the front of my pants, I didn't really look at a picture of Captain Marvel's. Yes, I committed the cardinal sin of cosplay. I took creative liberty. Quick warning when you're spray painting vinyl, even when it dries, it'll have like a sticky residue to it. So I'm just gonna kind of pour baby powder on it and see what happens. This is going horribly and I think it'll turn out awful. I wanna give up. But then I asked myself, would Captain Marvel give up? And then I answered myself, I don't know, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I kept going anyway. I pinned my shoulder hat to my collar pieces and then sewed them all together. For those gold downward stripey things, I cut four strips of home decor vinyl, draped them on my armor to make sure they would fit and then painted them gold. And then the part we've all been waiting for, it was time to remove the tape from the pants. Next, get out your gold fabric paint and just go ham with it. And to those of you in the older generation who don't know what the term ham means, I don't really either, but I'm pretty sure I used it correctly. I made the wrist gauntlets out of craft foam and cut out little stair-steppy designs on the top of each one. To add some dimension, you'll want to glue on extra pieces to the front and then weigh them down with whatever you can find that's heaviest, preferably a really buff man, but if you can't find a buff man, at least use what makes a buff man buff. Protein powder. After the glue has completely dried, it is time to paint the heck out of them. To give your gauntlets their curved shape, you'll want to hold them overheat, curl them up, place them in a glass, eat a whole can of Vienna sausages, and then use the can to cap it all off. While that's baking, add some red paint to the edge of of your breastplate. Now let's check on our gauntlets. And now you'll ask yourself, is it magic? No, just the raw, stinking power of Vienna sausages. To make the gauntlets wearable, I perforated the edges, that means poked holes in, and laced it corset style with a very thin elastic. I then repeated this same grueling process on our boot covers. Next, you'll want to take a piece of craft foam about the size of a tailless rat and place it face down on your shin thing and glue it there. After corset lacing your shin thing, you're going to want to perforate your rat piece with two holes, then slide the elastic under one through the other and test it under the boot that you're going to wear. Tie it in place and then slip it off. To make her super special superhero double fanny pack, I just pretty much ripped off my own tutorial, the one I did for Westworld, and then just repeated the same thing for these pouches. The main thing to remember is that you sew a strap on for your belt to go through before you sew the front to the back of the pouch. And then with all the armor pieces, I just sloppily hot glued them on myself and it actually turned out pretty darn good. I don't know why I was so scared to make this costume. You know, it's true what FDR said. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Well, that and Black Widow spiders. Oh, and computer hackers. I doodled around on my suit with Sharpie just to add some dimension, and then I added two elastic ties to the back of my neckband. Then I wanted to add some more gold details. I was going to squeeze some of the gold out of this tip and it wasn't coming out. It was coming out of this end. I wonder who did that, Latrexa. Though I ignore how I'm talking, I have white strips in. Now I'm wearing these whitening strips because I want to be Captain Marvel. And I made a whole list on how to be Captain Marvel. And first on that list is fresh broccoli in the fridge. No, stop. One sec. <laughs> Next on that list was something slightly cheaper. So now I just gotta figure out how to save a life. I gave it some thought and the quickest, easiest way to save a life is to be there for a friend who's really going through something. <laughs> hey, are you going through anything right now? No, no, I'm not going through anything. Crap. A quick, easy way to save a life is just to give your blood. Uh, there are no blood drives going on today, so I'm just gonna go and donate some plasma. But before leaving the house, I really wanted to alter and wear this shirt that I got at Salvation Army the day before. So I pinned it up, sewed it, cut off the excess fabric, threw on some high-waisted jeans, ripped off the tag, and then realized I couldn't wear it because the sleeves wouldn't roll up and you need sleeves that roll up to give plasma. So I changed, then gave my blood plasma, and now you know. How to save a life. Next on my Captain Marvel list is be fitnessful, and going on a run is a great way to accomplish that. But Makara, you say, I have a great excuse, like uh, it's too icy where I live in, in Ant Antarctica, so I can't run. Just throw on some ice skates and ice skate down your own road. I do it a lot, and honestly, I got a really bad blister last time, so I haven't done it in a while. Next up on our list is look like Captain Marvel, and to do that we're going to have to pin the long layers of our hair back and then cut the short layers shorter so that they look more like her. <laughs> Can you use effects to shoot lightning out of your hand too? I can try. When it's a little square, it's recording, right? And last but certainly not least, you can't be Captain Marvel without punching an old person, or at least appearing to have hit an old person. And of course, I did hit my dad. But I really had my hopes set on finding an elderly lady to fake punch because in the movie that's who Captain Marvel gets in a fight with. This was a struggle, however, old ladies are kind of hard to find. But then, when I was at an ice cream shop, I spotted my potential victim. Or, <laughs> not victim. 
yeah, victim was the right word. It took some time to work up the courage to approach the woman I hoped would be my long sought after actress. Did you see the video for a Captain Marvel costume? The scene where she gets in a fight with a- I'm guessing right now you're afraid that I'm about to say old lady. Senior citizen. <laughs> I was hoping I could get a picture with someone who's pretending. <laughs> After about 10 seconds of deliberation, I had a volunteer. I mean, it's just you could look scared. Well, I am scared. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> After thanking my fantastic volunteer for that photo opportunity, we went on our merry way to see the movie. Uh, like a week later. Yeah, we didn't see it that night because I got some showtimes mixed up. The point is, we saw it eventually, and when we did, my friend JJ had his Yawn Rog costume done, and Steven kind of dressed as Captain America. <laughs> I wonder what our mailman thinks of us.